Hi guys, it's Hillary from I'm Like Brave, a blog that's all about creating an uncommon life you love with your family. At the blog, we focus on women and mom entrepreneurs who want to turn their passions into a thriving business that not only will bring in an income, but will allow them the flexibility and time to live a life with their family that they truly love. For me, that's traveling the world with my family and kids, but for you, it could be anything you want. You're joining us today for our weekly series where we interview a creative entrepreneur who's doing big things. Today, I'm so excited to be talk talking with Jocelyn Patty, founder and owner of Lemons and Lace. And I'm sure if you've been on Instagram for more than two seconds, you've heard of her and heard of her company. Um, she's done an incredible job building her business in only two years and has over 61,000 followers on Instagram. So thanks so much for joining us, Jocelyn. Thank you for having me. First yeah. of all, you're so nice to Thanks. say that. <laughs> um, and um, we'll just get right to it. So tell us a little bit about yourself and your backstory, like what you did before Lemons and Lace and how you started it. Okay. Well, ever since I can remember, I wanted to do hair. When I was like four years old even, my mom would do my hair. I'd rip it out, cry, <laughs> change the part, and do it again. And so when... I was going to beauty school, I would purchase headbands and they would give me a headache after an hour max of wearing them. Okay. So I've always been crafty and so I went home and just decided to make my own comfortable ones that I could wear all day. Okay. So, and people would say, I want that and I was kind of hesitant to make them for people because I wanted a unique thing that no one had. Uh-huh. So... You know, people kept doing it and kept saying, I want it, I need it, I have to have it on my head. So I gave in, and I started a <laughs> blog called Hip Headbands, and you can actually look it, look it up right now and see kind of where I started. It's embarrassing, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> that's so funny. And then I, um, I was working at a salon, and they actually, I was making flower clips for brides and headbands then, and they asked if they could purchase them for me and then sell them at the front desk and so that kind of started things because I knew I wanted something bigger uh -huh. and I was in beauty school and I literally or I mean yeah when I was in beauty school I literally had no money to my name I was living in my grandparents basement and I thought you know why not start the blog so that's kind of how it happened so it was nice making like $100 a month doing what I loved, and it was just a fun hobby. Uh huh. So, and then I got married, and my husband is in residency for an ER doctor, and he moved me all the way to Cleveland, Ohio, away from my family in Arizona. <clears throat> and so I continued doing it when he was working. It was just something that I loved to do. And he came to me and said, you know, how about we make it a website? And I thought, yeah, that would be awesome because it would make it easier for my customers to purchase things. Uh huh. And so that's how it happened. Cool. So you were in beauty school? Yes. Okay. And then is this all you do now? Oh, yes. It's okay. all I do. <laughs> that's so awesome. I had to quit the salon, but. Oh, so you actually like got a job as a hairstylist? Yes. I okay. did. Cool. And I was juggling both, but then I was seven months pregnant and working 90 hours a week, and I just had to end it. So so when was the moment that you decided, like, this could be my business? Um. Well, I started – I sent items to bloggers uh -huh. um, when we started Lemons and Lace, and in two months we were international. Oh my and gosh. so I, I knew that I could – make it a career uh -huh. with hard work. So, That's so cool. But I love doing hair. I loved making – the reason why I wanted to do hair and the whole headband thing is because I love making bad hair days into good ones. Uh -huh. And I and I feel like as women, we want to be confident and feel beautiful. And so, you know, accessories kind of adds on to that. Mm -hmm. So you guys started as like adult headbands and then well, branched into kids? Actually, our Instagram is mostly kids because we get tagged on kids. But if you go to our website, we actually have accessories for all ages. Okay. 
um, we have beanies, scarves, headbands for adults as well. So they match their kids. Cool. I did know that. I have ordered yeah. from you before. <laughs> You're so sweet. <laughs> so what is your why? Like, why are you in business? Why do you love being an entrepreneur? And why do you love owning Lemons and Lace? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I think it's just a part of me. Um, I love it because of our customers. Like, I honestly can say it's because of them. Everything I do is because of them to make them happy. I bend backwards and forwards for them. And I love the fact that, you know, I can design an, an accessory and I am I love it, but I'm not sure if everyone else will love it. And uh -huh. then, you know, within a month I'm getting tags on hundreds of people that loved it and are wearing it and it's a part of their life. And so I think that's such a great compliment. compliment to yeah. Me. That's so awesome. Your stuff is so cute. <laughs> Thank you. You're so sweet. Thanks. So what type of lifestyle does owning Lemons and Lace afford you? Like how is it different than if you just worked at the hair salon? You know, when I was working at the salon, it was a struggle because I loved being with people and do, making them feel beautiful and doing hair. Uh -huh. But I was making more um, with Lemons and Lace. And so... I sit, you know, a client would cancel and I would just be sitting there and like, it would kill me because I'm like, I could be, you know, making <laughs> stuff at home and I have so much to do. And so it got to the point where just money wise, it just wasn't making sense staying at the salon. Mm -hmm. And um, it's never been about the money, which is so I feel like it's still not even mm -hmm. though I make more than my doctor husband and I sleep less than him. Are you, so, wait, can you repeat that? You make more than your doctor husband? Yes, but I sleep less, so it's all... <laughs> That's really cool, though. Um, huh. Um, so what, do you have any specific, like, I don't know, dreams, like, to do with your family that you feel like you'll be able to because of the income for Lemons and Lace? For sure. Uh, right now, we're, because of my dual income, I can we can um, put a good loan to a house, uh -huh. um, money down for a house. And so I think, you know, if we didn't have this, it would be really stressful, you know. Yeah. So it's been a big blessing. That's awesome. Um, so while you were building Lemons and Lace at the very beginning, what was the biggest failure you've ever encountered? And how did you overcome it? And what did you learn from it? I think... It's all relative how you look at failure because, I mean, it's, it's for, to fail to me is to give up. Uh -huh. And so, I mean, I've had ups and downs for sure. And I think um, the struggle, because I've never been into a business class, but I make it up with hard work and I figure out, you know, who to contact for this or what to do for this, when the demand increases, how do I keep my processing time short, you know, mm -hmm. I, when I'm in labor having a baby, and there's so many orders coming in, and the stress of that, how do I keep it from not getting behind, you know, so mm -hmm. how, so I think the struggle of growing and keeping, maintaining that customer service and quality is a challenge. Mm -hmm. So are you the type that is like planned for that or do you just like respond to it as it comes? Planned for what? Like if like as you're growing getting more orders like do you have a game plan or do you just kind of figure out as it comes? I kind of figure out as it comes. I yeah I think that's cool. And it, this is this sorry this wasn't on the original questions but as a side note like how, how much help do you have? I have a good amount of help. I, without my help, I couldn't do what I do today. I was literally doing 90, probably more hours a week, oh sewing gosh. and managing and cutting. And I was seven months pregnant and with this big belly cutting fabric. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when I knew I had to get help. And uh -huh. it was hard for me because I think, you know, letting go of that control because I have had bad experiences and I've had to redo them and um but the help that I found has been really amazing but I still inspect each order okay which is a full-time job in itself but I can't give up that yet yeah no totally I understand that um so how many 
so I assume you have like seamstresses. How many do you have? Yeah, I have seamstresses. I have about five and then um, people to help package. And my okay. husband actually does the finance part of, of cool. it. Okay. And do the seamstresses work a full workload or do they like part-time? Yeah, they're awesome. They work weekends. They work whenever needed. Wow. That's so they cool. They take on a lot. So I'm lucky. Yeah. Um, and then you have people to help package and stuff. So you're yeah. just like designing and inspecting quality control and marketing? Yes. Okay, cool. What do you think is the smartest decision that you've made along the way that's gotten you to where you are now? Um, let's see. The first month after building the website, uh -huh. I think the smartest decision was um, making that jump from a blog where people were just texting and emailing me to making the domain name. But it was stressful because we had to put down like a thousand dollars to start with, you know, uh -huh. items and fabric and the website and everything. And I remember crying, which I'm not a crier. And I called my dad and I, I was freaking out because I felt felt like okay, this wasn't about the money in the first place, but now that I am in, you know, $1,000 deep into it, it kind of is because my husband's in residency. I didn't have, you know, we didn't have that much money at all. Yeah. And so he asked me, he said, well, how much did you make? And I said, well, I made 1000 And he was amazed. He's like, that's amazing that you covered your costs in the first month. And I think that's where... I'm like, okay, this is a business, and I can do this. But okay. So getting a website and get, making it, like, official. Yes. I think that was the smartest decision. So you never did Etsy or anything? You know, I have done Etsy um, I probably, like, six years ago. Uh -huh. I, I, just, I just didn't really like it, but it's probably changed since then. Okay. That's so cool. So where do you get most of your traffic from for your website? Instagram by okay. far. Yeah. But we also get traffic um, from Google and Pinterest and okay. blogs and just from all over. So that kind of brings me to the next question. What has been the most successful way you've advertised your small business and gotten the word out? Instagram because people will tag me in their photos and I seriously love it. Like it's Instagram has made this business rewarding for me uh -huh. because I get to see these cute kids from all around the world and adults, you know, so happy in their lemons and lace. And everyone can have an Instagram, but I think, you know, I do really well in making them feel special because I do. I love them. Uh -huh. And I think just reposting customers just makes it so rewarding. Yeah, no, your Instagram is awesome in that way because it's just full of other kids. It's so I feel fun like you're for me. rarely ever promoting yourself. Everyone's just speaking for you. Yeah, and I feel like that's the cool thing about social media and this time. Um, it's you know, if a fashion blogger has a really cute headband on their little kid, then people want that, and they uh -huh. they trust that person. It's not like they just see a headband in the store; they want that because they love the child. You know, yeah. and so I think that's been really rewarding for me. So how have you gotten, like, all of your customers to be so social about reposting? Because I know some people, you know, everyone has Instagram, and everyone sends product out, but not everyone has customers repost. I I got lucky. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My customers, they just, they love showing me. I don't know. So you don't I'm ask them? I'm blown away. No, I don't. That's so cool. I just, I have a hashtag that people know to hashtag. If they want to yeah. be posted. So. And probably since you already post kids all the time, they like people know. hope they get chosen. <laughs> yes. I wish I could post everyone, but I can't. Yeah. And I think Instagram, if you want to use it, um, I love making my customers feel connected. Uh -huh. So sometimes I'll um, have them name fabrics and oh, yeah. just really keeping them connected to me instead of just an Instagram. It's a place that they can come you know, and get some fashion ideas and see cute kids and that's, you know, and I think a big thing is to not spam because mm -hmm. people don't like that. Yeah. No, totally. So. 
Um, so what's been your biggest win with Lemons and Lace, that biggest, um, like, most awesome moment? I think the fact that I have sustained success and figured out a way to, when the demand increases, to keep it running smoothly uh -huh. because I haven't set foot in a business class. Yeah, that's so awesome. <laughs> it's hard, but it's been really rewarding. So do you mind telling me a little bit more, since that is like your biggest accomplishment, a little bit more about your internal processes? Like, um, I mean, I assume you have a process down now where if you keep growing, you'll just replicate what you're already doing, correct? You'll just bring on more seamstresses yes. and more help. Mm -hmm. And how do you usually find them? Um... I've just been really lucky. I set up interviews, and uh -huh. I I had a lot of people, you know, want to do it, but I was just really picky. Mm -hmm. So you had developed a name for yourself by the time you started hiring, and people like, yes. wanted to work for you. Yes. That's cool. Are they all usually moms? Um, Actually, we have all different ethnicities and ages that okay. help us. That's so, so some cool. are moms and some aren't. Okay. And they're, are they employees or are they like um, contractors? Yes, they're independent contractors. Okay. That's so cool. I have one contractor. Awesome. So she helps me, but I'm like already thinking, how do I multiply? Because I have one that I can trust so much. But like, how yes. do you get multiple people you can yes. trust? So <laughs> that's really cool. Um, and then how do you find the balance between running your business? I'd like to know also like how many hours you work and then your family life. I really don't think there's such thing as balance when you're a mom and you're a business and you're a wife and your husband works a lot. But I want to get there eventually, but right now I'm okay with it because okay. I have learned to hire help for the job, babysitting. I have a nanny that help, that helps me, and then I also have um, a cleaning lady. So uh -huh. That's house, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> isn't crazy and then um I'm also looking to hire a chef if anyone's interested let me know oh my gosh that's my I'm dream <laughs> no I wish but my husband's actually so supportive um uh -huh. to help me have a balance he works long shifts at the hospital and he comes home well this was more in the beginning when I needed more help he would come home after a 12 hour shift and be on his hands and knees cutting and I'm like, what are you doing? It's like, I'm cutting Mystic Mermaid so that you can have some free time. <laughs> That's so awesome. <laughs> so he's great. So but you're... I, right now I'm working about 50 hours a week, which Holy is cow. half of what I used to. Okay, so what are? can you give me a breakdown of those 50 hours? So if you're doing marketing, quality control, designing, like what, what all are you doing? Okay, so answering emails, um, answering Facebook messages, Instagram messages, um, and then just managing, finding fabrics okay. is a lot. Yeah. Because we, we want to be unique. Um, I would say just with it all, I mean, and I still cut the fabrics. So oh, okay. that's what's a big yeah. thing for me. I can't give that up yet. Okay. So, um, <laughs> so 50, about 50 hours and then you have, do you have a full-time nanny? Um, you know, my son's really good at being by me when I'm inspecting orders. Uh -huh. So I don't have a full time. He's with me probably half the day and then with her like a couple hours a day too. And my husband's great at helping with him. Yeah, that's so awesome. Um, so what is your ultimate end game for Lemons and Lace? Like how big do you want it to be? When will you know that it's like... I don't know, do you have a goal for how large you want it to be and exactly what you want it to look like? Yeah, I mean, I want to continue expanding. Um, obviously, figuring out how to do that is a challenge, but um, I think adding products, too. Uh -huh. I want to maintain the handmade nature of our shop as okay. well as the quality and keeping the brand. So... I'm not just going to add a random thing, you know, to our shop. Yeah. Um, it was exciting because last year we were able to have our lemons and lace print on fabric. Oh, yeah. So that was really cool. So I think I want to do more of um, 
making, designing our own fabrics. Okay. So you're not looking into like getting into manufacturing. If you want to keep it seamstresses, like handmade. I mean, I think there comes a point where you have to, uh -huh. but for now I want to keep it handmade and support moms. Okay. And other people. That's really cool. Um, do you have a timeline like when you're trying to get to your end goal? Um, no, not right now. <laughs> My priority is being a mom and wife, so yeah. whatever I can do with doing that. That's cool. Um, and then I hope you don't mind if I add this question. If you don't know, that's okay. But um, So since you kind of haven't gone to business school or anything, where have you found, um, I don't know, your support or like education or advice on growing a business yourself? Um, you know, I... I really think it's just researching things and okay. having that desire to want to do it and then answers will come. And I, I turn to my family and my husband. They're great. Yeah. So. That's awesome. So you just kind of learn as you go the whole way. Mm-hmm. Sounds about like me. <laughs> um, and then do you have any parting advice to all of the creative entrepreneurs and moms who are aspiring to do something like this watching? I would say find a demand and something that you know there's a need for and just run with it and I would say success takes time and I think people expect it right away and when people hear that we went international in two months they are just amazed but it really has started, it started like six years ago before that because I had been making things before, you know, I made it a business. And so I think, you know, baby steps and just work hard. Uh-huh. Be patient with yourself. Yeah. There's no substitute for hard work. That's for right. sure. <laughs> cool. Well, um, thank you so much for being generous and open enough to share a little bit of your story and the behind the scenes of your business. And I thank hope you for all having of, me. Yeah. I hope all of you out there watching have learned a lot from her too. And if you have any questions for Jocelyn, you can go back to the blog. It's I'm like brave.com and you can leave questions in the comment section and I'll make sure that I connect you with Jocelyn. Um, so yeah, thanks again, Jocelyn. Thank you. All right, bye guys. Yeah.